Hello friends, welcome back to Quantum Quandary. We're going to be looking at the calculus of variations today, uh, specifically the theoretical background, I mean the mathematical background of it, uh, because next time I'd like to do the Brachistochrone problem and the two-body problem like this. So <laughs> I need to show you this first. Um, what I've just written down is a functional, s is a functional, s of x, where x is a dynamic variable of time, in this case, or just t, where t is an independent variable, <laughs> it doesn't have to be time, of course, and we want to find the extremal values of this s. s is called the action. Uh, and we want to find this, mm, the static points, stationary points of the integral, uh, which basically means uh, when this uh, s has the minimum value. Now, obviously, if you're integrating over all of uh, some field t, like is it a field, or just over variable t, uh, it's going to depend which function you've got inside. So this l is a function of t, x, and x dot, where x dot is the derivative. So x dot is d by dt of x, standard notation. Um, and we want to see when this s is going to be small or big, when it's going to have its extremum. Um, in these cases, x is going to be a different function. <laughs> so um, what we're looking for is we want to change x to go into these little variations x plus delta x x minus um, yeah x plus x goes to x plus delta x now uh, it's also important to note this uh, integral oops this integral is um, on an interval from t0 to t1 and we say that we know x of t0 it's x0, and we say that we know x of t1, it's x1. So this means that in these points, there will be no variation. So in these points, delta x0 is 0, and delta x1 is 0. So <clears throat> this function, x of t, let's say that this is t1, t0 and t1, this function it could be this, could be that, anything. Um, now, if it was something like this, that would be x of t. And then all of these differences would be delta x. I mean, x of t plus delta x or minus delta x. But what's important to note is that they have to start and end in the same point. That's what we specified by saying that del x1, delta x1 is 0 and delta x0 is 0. zero. That's why they have to end at the same point. And now we're looking for which kind of this, these functions <clears throat> minimizes the action S. So we define this variation of S uh, to be S of X plus delta X minus just S of X, right? This is very much like the derivative. And then if we were to say that delta S has to be zero, you might recall that if you had a function of x and y, and um, it would be like del f by del x dx plus del f by del y dy, and you were looking for constant f, and that would mean that all these partials have to be equal to zero. And conversely, if it was just a function of one variable, the df by dx would have to be zero, right? which is the same as saying that df is df by dx dx. So that's why df by dx is zero. It's going to be the same with these variations. So we're going to be um, keeping only the linear terms of delta x, of the variation with respect to x, and we're going to set it, its coefficient to be equal to zero <clears throat> in exactly the same analogous way. So now we're going to look at what delta s is. Uh, we might do well to first find this quantity, 
There we go, I'll underline that and let's find that. <clears throat> so S of X plus Delta X is equal to, um, we're looking at this guy over here when we add the Delta X to the X's, sorry. Uh, that's equal to the Lagrangian of T X plus Delta X. And then this is D by DT of X plus Delta X. Now it's good to note that D by DT of Delta X is just Delta of X dot. So they commute the derivative operator and the variation operator commute. This is because in, in our case, the independent variable, which is in this case time, uh, is completely known to us. It's absolute, right? So we know it's at each point of time, we know the time, so there is nothing to be varied there. It's certain, so the time can commute with variation. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so we have this. And now we need to tailor expand this uh, Lagrangian so that we would have linear orders of delta x. Okay, I'm just rewriting it. And so that's, that's gonna be just our regular L of t x x dot plus this guy, when I tailor expand him, is del L by del X, delta X. And then when I expand with respect to this, I get del L by del X dot, delta X dot. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna be putting that inside here. And because the integrals are additive, we can put everything in the same integral. So delta S is going to be the integral DT. <clears throat> We have to, um, we put this part in. So we have the Lagrangian. Let me just copy all that. We have the Lagrangian. It's partial derivatives times the variation. And then we subtract the Lagrangian from this one because we said minus s, right? So these two guys will just disappear. <coughs> And we're left with dt. And luckily I have this copied, right? <laughs> that worked out just fine. And that's supposed to be zero. Now, remember what I said, like, like in the um, <clears throat> total derivative of a function of two variables, for example, we want these to be equal to zero. But that's only if these dx and dy are mutually orthogonal or, you know, mutually um, independent. But <clears throat> delta x dot is definitely not independent of delta x. Um, so we need to express it with respect to delta x before we can do any of this shenanigans and equate coefficients to zero. So we want to look at this term. We underline it and I look at dt delta L by delta x dot, delta x dot. I look at this one. <clears throat> so um, we can notice that this is um, one of the two results of a product differentiation. So I can write this as dt and then d by dt of delta L by delta x dot, delta x. So if we look at this, if I differentiate this part, I'm gonna get this plus another term, this guy differentiated with respect to time, plus, I mean, time is just this other function, right? So I have to subtract that away because I just have this in the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side, I have that this plus, I mean, minus this, where only this is differentiated now. And what's really nice is that we can get rid of this term 
we integrate it out. <clears throat> so this whole thing is, oh uh, yeah, there's no integral for the first one. We integrate it out, like I said, delta x, and it's evaluated on the boundary. So that's t0, t1 in this case, minus the integral dt, uh, d by dt of delta l, delta x dot, um, God, I hate writing partials, delta x. <clears throat> and this part goes to zero because like I said, the variations are equal to zero and the boundaries, we know what the value of x is at the boundaries. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> so we keep only this term. We keep only that term and we put it back in. Now we've got everything with respect to delta x. So we have that zero, which is the variation of s, is equal to, well, which is what we want it to be equal to, is equal to the integral delta sub t. We copy the first term, so that's partial l, partial x. I'm gonna put delta x in front, and then minus d by dt, partial l, partial x dot. And then I have delta x. And now we can set this equal to zero because it's the only way that this integral is always zero, regardless of delta x. So if that's equal to zero, then we get the Euler-Lagrange equation. Euler-Lagrange equation. Partial L, partial x minus d by dt, partial L partial x dot equals zero. This is the result that we were looking for. All the stuff up there is the explanation of why we get what we get. And we'll be using this as a result in the next few videos. So I hope everything was clear. We'll also be focusing on field theory probably a bit later. So we'll generalize the Lagrangian to the Lagrangian density in space-time. That should be fun. This was the, I guess, most boring part of it. Well, thank you for watching. <laughs> Leave a like. Hope you enjoyed the video. <sighs> See you next time. Bye-bye.